In this podcast, we will learn about prevention of nosocomial infection in neonatal intensive care unit. Sepsis is the most important cause of neonatal death in hospital. Every hospital should have its own policies to prevent infection of newborn in the baby care area. Prevention of infection is more cost effective than treating infection in neonates. The basic principles of infection control are standard precautions, hand hygiene, policy regarding visitors in NICU, basic asepsis routines, rational antibiotic policies, surveillance and nursing staff management, biomedical waste management, bundle approach for web and clepsy, and finally good housekeeping routines. Standard precautions the purpose of standard precautions includes the practice of avoiding contact with the patient's bodily fluids by means of wearing non-porous articles such as medical gloves, face shields, etc. It is designed for doctors, nurses, patients and healthcare support workers who are required to come in contact with the patient or their bodily fluids. Under standard precautions, all patients are considered as potential carriers of blood-borne pathogens. The guideline recommends wearing gloves when collecting or handling blood and body fluids, wearing face shields when there is a danger of blood splashing on mucous membrane, and disposing of all needles and sharp objects in puncture-proof containers. This includes using gloves, mask, cap, gowns, hand hygiene, and safe disposal of the sharp. The next main principle of infection prevention is the most important and most effective method that is hand hygiene. Before going to the details of hand washing, let us first see the essentials before entering any NICU. Guidelines for entry into the baby care area are Personal with active infection should not be allowed entry into the NICU. Remove shoes, socks, woolens, watch, bangles and rings. Roll up the full sleeves up to elbow. Put on new sleepers. Wash hands with soap and water for 60 seconds. Put on sterile half sleeve gown. Five moments of hand hygiene are Do hand hygiene Before touching the baby Before clean or aseptic procedure After body fluid exposure after touching the baby, before and after touching baby's surrounding. Hand washing is the single most important means of preventing nosocomial infections. It is very simple and cheap. Basic requirements of hand washing area are running water supply, soap, elbow or foot operated tap. One minute hand washing is to be done before entering the unit. We shall now see the procedure of hand washing. In this video, we shall learn about hand washing. In any health facility, sepsis is the most important cause of neonatal death. The first and the foremost step in prevention of infections is hand washing. Hand washing should be done for at least 2 minutes before entering the unit and for 20 seconds before and after touching any patient. And remember that hand washing is also to be done before and after touching any unsterile surface and fomites. According to the WHO recommendation, hand hygiene with soap and water should be done for 40 to 60 seconds and hand hygiene with alcohol-based formulation should be done for 20 to 30 seconds. We shall now see the five moments in which hand washing is indicated. They are before touching a patient, before any aseptic procedure, after body fluid exposure risk, after touching a patient and last but not the least after touching patient surrounding. Hand washing is important before recording any patient parameter, doing chest auscultation, abdominal palpation or even changing the position of an infant. It is also important before suctioning, any invasive procedure, administering injection, orogastric tube insertion, opening any vascular access system 
and preparation of medication. Hand washing is also important after exposure to body fluids. This can happen during suctioning, dressing of a wound, administering injections, manipulation of any fluid sample, insertion of an endotracheal tube, removal of an endotracheal tube, cleaning up urine, feces, vomit, handling waste like bandages, napkins and pads, or cleaning of contaminated and visibly soiled material or of medical instruments. Simple procedure like after touching a patient, after taking pulse, taking the blood pressure of an infant also mandates hand washing. After touching any bed linen or monitoring, that is, anything in the patient's surrounding, hand washing also becomes important. Handling the baby's incubator, handling the warmer, handling the devices attached to the baby, handling the baby's probe, the blood pressure cuff, the IV tubings, the syringes and the orogastric tube also requires hand washing by the healthcare provider. Each unit should have adequate facilities for hand washing. They include a continuous running water supply and an elbow operated tap with a soap. Remember, we should use elbow operated taps for hand washing. This is not ideal for hand washing because there is no elbow operated tap. Also, the sink is not deep to allow enough space for proper hand washing. Before hand washing, remove the wristwatch, remove the bangles and the rings. Now, roll the sleeves above the elbow. First and foremost, wet your hands with water. Apply enough soap to cover all the hand surfaces until the elbow. Now, close the tap with the elbow and start washing your hands in the following sequence. Rub your hands palm to palm. Then, right palm over the left dorsum with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Then, palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Followed by the back of the finger to the opposing palms with the fingers interlocked. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in the right palm has to be done and vice versa to be repeated. Rotational rubbing backwards and forwards with clasped fingers of the right hand in the left palm and vice versa. Then wrist and the forearm up to the level of the elbow. After washing your hands, always keep them at a higher level than the elbow. Now. Close the tap using the elbow. Dry your hands by keeping them vertical by air or using a single use sterile napkin or a paper. Remember, wet hands transfer pathogens much more readily than dry hands. Never use a common towel for drying the hands. Discard the napkin in the bin kept next to the patient for the respective purpose. Alcohol-based hand rubs can also be used to reduce bacterial colony counts on the hands of healthcare providers so that hospital-acquired infections can be prevented. Alcohol-based hand rubs can be used after drying the hands following hand washing and before and after every routine patient contact. We shall now see the technique of applying alcohol-based hand rub. Apply two or three press of the product to the palm of one hand. That is, it will be two or three press on a 500 ml sterilium bottle which pours out three to five ml of the sterilium. Rub both the hands together, cover all the surfaces of the hands and the fingers as previously explained in the steps of hand washing. Remember, you need to wait till your hands are completely dry. Do not touch the baby with wet hands. Once dry, your hands are completely safe. Alcohol-based hand rubs are not effective on the hands that are visibly dirty or contaminated with organic materials. In such a scenario, Hands must first be washed with soap and water even if antiseptics are to be used as an adjunctive measure. 
some points to remember soap and alcohol based hand rubs should not be used concomitantly keep your nails short and pay attention to them while washing your hands most microbes on the hands come from beneath the fingernails do not wear artificial nails or nail polish remember removing the entire jewelry which includes the ring the watches and the bracelets before entering the newborn care unit thank you Wash hands when visibly soiled otherwise use hand rub do 20 to 30 seconds hand hygiene with alcohol based hand rub in between babies techniques of applying alcohol based hand rub apply product to palm of one hand to press on 500 ml sterlium bottle pours 3 ml of sterlium and rubs hand together covering all surfaces of hands and fingers as in steps of hand washing wait until hands are dry do not touch the baby with wet hands after using this method 5 to 10 times you will need to remove the build up moisturizer from your skin wash this off with soap and water policy regarding visitors in nicu only parents of the baby should be allowed entry into the nursery mothers are welcomed at any time father should be allowed at the time of admission to the nursery and whenever he wants to do kmc parent should be guided and supervised about proper hand washing techniques person with active infection should not be allowed entry into the baby care area basic asepsis routines use of gloves always use sterile gloves for invasive procedures like sampling starting intravenous lines endotracheal intubation giving intravenous injections etc throw used gloves in blue bag adequate number of sterile and clean pair of gloves should be available in the unit use full sleeves gown and mask for all invasive procedure that is lumbar puncture blood transfusion etc The skin preparation is an important part of asepsis routine. The procedure for skin preparation is wash and dry hands. Wear sterile gloves. Prepare skin site confined to smallest possible area of skin. Swab with alcohol first. Allow it to dry. Swab iodine on site and allow it to dry. Swab again with alcohol to wipe off iodine. Allow it to dry. Skin is now ready for puncture of prick. Rational antibiotic policy. Antibiotics are to be used judiciously. Avoid prolonged courses of broad spectrum antibiotics. Avoid prolonged and frequent courses of third generation cephalosporins or vancomycin. Surveillance and nursing staff management. Surveillance is the monitoring of infections in the unit by conducting periodic surveys in order to identify unusual pattern of flora and infections it also includes monitoring of antibiotic use and resistance surveillance should be carried out room air weekly surfaces warmer incubator weekly equipments that is ambu bag mask once in a week liquids water in humidifier bottle twice weekly baby's blood csf culture whenever indicated pus culture whenever present personal hand nasal throat swabs as required nursing staff management baby should be assigned to the nurses based on the total number of babies sick babies stable babies and the number of nurses present in the duty each day assignment is to be done according to the condition of the baby and by keeping in mind the concept of primary nursing primary nurse is one who receives the baby in the nursery she should be assigned 
that baby in each shift whenever she is on duty biomedical waste management proper disposal of hospital waste is important to keep the environment clean and the waste should be disposed of in a proper way all healthcare professionals should be well conversant with their local hospital policies for waste disposal black drum is used for leftover food fruits feeds vegetables waste paper packing material empty box bags etc waste is disposed of by routine municipal council committee machinery yellow drum is used for infected non plastic waste that is human anatomical waste blood body fluids etc this type of waste requires incineration blue drum is used for infected plastic waste such as used disposable syringes needles first destroy the needle in the needle destroyer and discard it in puncture proof container patient's iv set blood transfusion set endotracheal tube catheters urine bag etc should be cut into pieces and disposed in blue bag this waste will be autoclaved and make it non infectious this is then shredded and disposed of bundle approach for web and clepsy care bundles are defined as a group of interventions that when implemented together result in better outcome ventilator associated pneumonia that is web is defined as nosocomial pneumonia in mechanically ventilated patients that develops more than 48 hours after initiation of mechanical ventilation central line associated blood stream infection that is clepsy is a lab confirmed blood stream infection in a patient who had a central line within the 48 hours period before the development of blood stream infection and that is not related to an infection at another site care bundle for web this includes hand hygiene aseptic precaution during suction no routine use of saline use saline only if tenacious secretions are present position of infant raise the head and 30 degree and lateral position to avoid aspiration promote optimum humidification promote men that is minimal enteral nutrition for gut motility and use express press milk for men care bundle for clepsy the bundle includes hand hygiene ensure maximum barrier precaution that is sterile gown sterile gloves surgical mask cap for inserter and assistant disinfect skin as per unit protocol maintain sterile field throughout the procedure use transparent dressing and chains when contaminated with blood do not break the continuity of line for giving antibiotics good housekeeping routines now we will learn about the tips of good housekeeping keep separate spread and bedded in swept containers stethoscope tape measure thermometer resuscitation equipment and hand rub for each baby for good housekeeping some of the do's are the nursery temperature is to be maintained between 25 to 28 degree centigrade calm and clean environment 24 hour water and electricity supply with adequate lighting and ventilation floor should be cleaned once in each nursing shift intravenous set to be changed daily orogastric nasogastric tubes as long as the baby can keep sterilize the bottle chambers daily by dipping in 2% sidex for 4 to 6 hr and some of the don'ts are no dry dusting only wet cleaning no formites that is file x-ray film pen etc on top of baby cot do not top up the humidification chamber in addition to previous some more do's and don'ts are clean the walls with 2% bacillosid once in each nursing shift dustbin should be washed daily use separate iv line for giving antibiotics and change iv fluid bottles in each shift after seal is removed clean with spirit swab use sterile squeezed bitter in swab to cover the bottle use syrups within one week of opening write the opening dates on it 
antibiotics boil to be changed after 24 hours avoid overcrowding never use stock iv fluids that is heparin no need for flushing iv lines with heparin do not open the iv fluids line for giving injections thank you